Okay, video number two in the How to Wire Schneider Modicon Expansion Modules. What we're going to be looking at today will be sourcing digital inputs on a TM3 expansion module. The TM3 is a widely used expansion set of modules. Before we begin that, though, we're going to go through a quick caution over here. Sourcing inputs can create danger from unwanted PLC triggering during a fault. The cable that runs them is, has a fault if the DC supply is grounded on the negative. And because DC supplies are commonly grounded on the negative, this does pop up inside of industry. So if you do decide that you want to go with sourcing inputs, or if somebody's forcing you to go with sourcing inputs, just be knowledgeable of the fact that they can cause fault. They will not cause fault in and of themselves. However, if there is a ground fault that exists on the system somewhere, then we do get these problems. So if you need more information, you can go watch video number two in the M221 series. And there is lots, it's a full 20 minute video on syncing, sourcing, and IEC positive and negative logic. We'll skip past that for now. We'll move on to our actual materials that we're looking at here. This video is going to be based on a specific module, the TM3 DI8, which is going to be an eight digital input type of expansion. However, what we do in this video can just be expanded out for the DI16 or the DI32, which are just going to have more IO points. So rather than doing separate videos for them each, uh, just do it off the smallest one because then we've got the most room to do our drawings and then you can just expand that out as needed. So the concepts will be the same. Okay. Let's take a look at our manufacturer's data sheets. First thing that we're gonna note is that this thing is going to be applicable across pretty much the entire Modicon family, everywhere from the 241, 221, 251, and 262. It is going to be 61131 compatible. That's our main PLC programming uh, guideline. And we can use it as syncing or sourcing. The previous video, video number one, showed it as being a syncing. Now we're gonna try it as a sourcing. It's got a nominal voltage of 24 volts and each of my inputs takes no more than seven milliamps. So even if you've got a 32 input card, you're not gonna be running more than a quarter of an amp, 250 milliamps into it at any time. Very, they're very, very low power. There's a bit more detail that's given as well. Um, one of the biggest pieces of detail that we're gonna look at is gonna be this voltage state one guaranteed and the voltage state zero guaranteed. What this does is this tells us where we have got acceptable values of voltage and where we've got undefined. This part over here for a state one or what we would call a high is gonna be anywhere between 15 to 28.8 would be considered to be a high or a logical one that we would have inside there. For a state zero, we see that anywhere between zero through five volts is going to go and be considered as a zero. And what that does is that leaves us with this area right over here, which is gonna be what we refer to as the undefined region. The undefined region on any digital input does not mean it doesn't do anything. It just means that you don't know what it's going to do and Schneider refuses to go and guarantee it. If you bring in a voltage somewhere smack dab in the middle, about 12 volts, let's say, Schneider cannot guarantee whether the software is going to go and read that as a high or whether it's going to go and read that as a low. So they just tell us to keep it out of those ranges by staying within these ones that we see over here. Should make sense to most of you anyways. This is a 24 volt you know, card that we need. It's going to have 24 volt nominal input. So keep your voltages up near that 24 volt level. Okay, sourcing. Sourcing itself is going to be direct connection of my positive to the reference or to the common terminal. And it's gonna be an application of IEC negative logic. And negative logic and positive logic are just really dealing with whether we're switching in negatives or switching in positives. Once again, video two out of the M221 series will give you lots and lots of details onto these and the differentiates between them all. Last thing that we have is off of our installation sheet, we found the drawing that is going to go and refer to these, the TM3 DI8. Now the drawing is a little bit confusing in the fact that we have got down here at the bottom, two power supplies that appear to be back to back. And what they're showing is not that you need to have two power supplies, rather that you have got an option of two power supplies. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and scratch out the one, the A power supply. We don't want that one shown inside of there because that would be what we would use for a sinking style of input. So we'll just scratch that all out. And we will take a look at this one over here. This would be a sourcing. Sourcing, once again, as we said, was going to be direct connection of my positive to my commons. And we see it's tying all the commas themselves together. What we'll also note about this one is that Schneider themselves did not go and place any overcurrent protection inside of here. This is rare for Schneider. They're usually pretty on top of this. You'll see it on pretty much every other drawing, but they will show a fuse holder that's going to be over top of one of those lines. We'll apply one ourselves. This is just, you know, uh, they're not perfect. They forgot to put one inside of here, but 
obviously, you know, best case for field is that you fuse all of your external power supplies that we're seeing here before we take them out to our inputs. So we'll take our positive to the common through a fuse, and then what we'll do is we will distribute our negative just as a stinger out to every single field device, in and out, in and out, in and out, and then we take that back into our inputs. Let's take a look at how this looks practically. Before we do, we'll just take a quick look at your options for fusing. I suggest going one of these two routes. You can either go and use a class CC fuse. These are gonna be a 10 millimeter diameter fuse. Uh, fairly easy to get a hold of. You can get them, if you do get them, get the HCLR, which are gonna be the fastest acting fam, uh, fuse inside of that family. Or alternatively, you can go with one of these, which is going to be one of those narrow glass or ceramic style of fuse holders. Both of these fuse holders that we see will mount onto DIN rails, so you can keep them inside of your PLC cabinet close to where your PLC inputs themselves are. We will be using this one in our drawings. All right, so over here we have got a more or less complete PLC setup. What we're seeing is that we are using an M2551 inside of my cabinet as my main brain. We do see that we're taking AC in, that AC we are then running it down through a DIN rail circuit breaker into a DC power supply. That DC power supply is kicking out as 24 volts on the opposite side. That 24 volts we are then distributing into two of our DIN rail fuse holders. If you follow this path through, this DIN rail fuse holder runs all the way in for my power. It's the main power supply that we have for that. This one over here is left unterminated because this is the one we are going to go and access. <clears throat> My field devices are going to be my normally closed and are normally open switches, push buttons and things like that. We've also got this sensor over here that we're gonna bring in as well. But we'll start with bringing in my common to make this sourcing. Remember for sourcing, we have to bring the positive into the common. So we're gonna take from this fuse holder right over here and we are going to take that down and we are going to jump, jump, jump across these. We're going to tie all three commons together so that we have got now that positive 24 that has been brought inside of there. Next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go and take our negative and our negative we're just going to go and hop it around as a stinger to every single one of my inputs that I'm going to go and see. And then from each of these inputs all we would need to do now is run in my actual lead back down over here. So that one there I can take this one in over here. I shouldn't have done them like that at the end of crossing, but it doesn't really matter. We're just showing how the connections themselves go in. It doesn't matter the order that we're placing them in at this point. If I take a look at this, I should be able to carry a complete path for current through. Always double check. If you can't make a complete path, then you need to double check your wiring. But let's follow this one over here. We can take positive in. I can take my positive over this into my PLC go through the PLC and then I can go up on any one of my inputs and then follow back along my negative all the way back home. And I did that whole thing without lifting the pen off the page once. So that tells us we got a complete loop for current flow so this thing will be able to go and trigger. All right, last component that we have to go and hook in over here is going to go and be this sensor that we have over here. Uh, sensors are going to fall under one of two categories. We're going to have PNP or NPN. What we would want if we were doing sourcing would be NPN. The first letter tells you what this thing is going to be switching out. It's going to be switching out a negative, which if we take a look, that's what we're switching to our PLC and everything else. We want to go and match that, that this is going to be a negative. PNP would not give us a voltage differential. These uh, three wire sensors are commonly going to be coded with brown, blue, and black. Brown is going to be the positive value of voltage, blue is going to be the negative, and black is going to be the signal back. So we'll just finish up those connections. We'll take our negative to our blue, because that's our signal back. We will take our positive, we'll come off of this same terminal that we just had that one at over there. We'll run that all the way up to here make a connection onto there. And then this last one over here is just gonna be now my signal from there back into my PLC. And there we've got a proper three wire sensor connected in as well. Perfect, that is it for all of this sourcing. Once again, just going back to the very, very beginning of this one, be very, very careful with sourcing because under a ground fault, they can trigger the PLC. So the PLC will think that there's a input when there actually isn't.